All right, continuing my night hare, my uh, night hawk with my rabbit, playing with the the blob brush to digitally ink over the pencil sketch that was scanned in. The difference in inking approaches is I'm using a smaller brush for the bird and doing a lot of curved strokes and building up a lot more ink, which will mean that it won't take as long to color the bird because there's a lot more ink covering it and giving it its tones already. Kind of like you see here with my inspiration. And because I'm embracing kind of a more chaotic look, I don't need to be as exacting with my lines. But it is asking a lot of the computer to remember each of these marks, right, in its history. So every once in a while, I'm just going to hit Command S to save all those paths. Because remember, unless the paths all connect and all these little marks don't, Illustrator saves them all as individual marks. And this is the stage on a project where I'm usually listening to podcasts and I just kind of force myself to work on it, get into the flow. Because once you've set your approach, there's not a whole lot of shortcuts. But I've only been working on this for 45 minutes so far. And so progress might feel slow with each individual mark, but you just, you commit to it. Sometimes artwork is more work than art, but it all pays off. Okay, and if I, get, if I get bored with this texturing, this inking, there's other places I can go on my bird to kind of work with it. So I can work around the eyes and kind of echo out the hatching from there to suggest the feathers. And I'm kind of building up a visual vo visual vocabulary of marks here. I'm letting letting it be really accurate. Illustrator isn't smoothing it out at all for me. But my hand is moving in these little curves that are somewhat choppy. And even though it's having to remember each of these individual paths that doesn't overlap, it's still not freezing up on me, which is good. I can always close other programs if I need to. So I am doing uh, a type of inking that now is establishing a value range. And when that's the case, I and mean, that's the reason I started the eye here, you want to establish your darkest dark pretty early on. So the eyes are my darkest dark, but then where, where else do I have darks? Well, it's going to be on the cast shadow underneath the wing, right at the base of the legs. These little kind of furs, the kind of hairy parts of the feather that looks like fur coming off the legs. So I can establish those dark darks pretty early. That will make it a little bit easier.
but in order for it to read as mostly texture, I'm not going to have a lot of internal outlines on my bird. But I still want it completely contained on the outside. And if I really need to speed up, I can always just be more zoomed out like this. And because my brush is limited to not being very big, I'm not really in danger of making a huge mess. The worst that can happen is I'll have to kind of erase or clean up the outside edge a little bit. So I'm going to take my preview document. Again, it's often all about how you set up your work. I'm going to shrink it pretty small just because I want to get a sense of where the lights and darks are. And I'm going to set it off in the corner like that. So I'll probably move it to the top. And that way I can see kind of the direction of the marks and then just keep building them up. If you've ever done a lino cut or, or a wood cut where you're gouging away from the printmaking material in order to help it hold ink, this is kind of how you would build up tones there too with lots of little marks. You kind of roughly define your, your shapes and your approach first. And notice I always want to choose the direction of mark that helps reinforce the shape of the overall bird. So it's a digital art class, but you can tell with techniques like this, there can still be a lot of technique and approach that can feel very hand done, right? Very specific to the way you make a mark. If you want to give yourself some variation, you can try with different angles, different amounts of roundness. Slightly different sizes, and variations. like changing uh, the nib on your, your stylus or on a pen. You'll get a slightly different feel and then you can kind of blend them in with each other. This is a slightly smaller, slightly differently angled brush tip. 
see how the detail is a little bit finer. And if I only use that, it might feel too fussy. Right, so I'm starting to define these feather textures as the values change around the eye and around the head. And what's fun about doing the bird and the rabbit is you'll see the difference between mostly outline inking, what's called contour inking, and more fully dimensional inking here. Now, where that's going to have a big impact is when we get to adding color. Because you, you wouldn't uh, approach color in the same way for both of these types of inking. And all the work we do in the second half of the course that's more personal, that's based on our own ideas, and my showing you new tools but trying to get you to use them in more unique ways where you have a lot more control the goal is to kind of find your own voice your own vocabulary of marks and images that communicate the content that you're most interested in so you might be interested in spot illustrations that are very much based on texture and detail and line or you might just be solely in love with color. And digital art allows you to explore all those things with the same tools. Unlimited possibilities here. Now, the great thing about meticulous techniques like this is you actually don't need to have very good control just by nature of how, how slowly they build. Um, they are very controlled. It's why often in high school you'll have a, an ink stippling project because high schoolers like to take forever on things. And something like this, by taking longer, you maintain more and more control as you go. But it takes patience to do this in a wood block. It takes patience to do this with ink stippling on paper. Honestly, this is the best way to get a vector of inking like this. Because if I inked it by hand on a piece of tracing paper and then scanned it and live traced it, I would lose a lot of the little gaps that by doing it directly, I'm able to control. So digital art is about knowing what the advantages are of these tools, but also what uh, disadvantages there are when not to force them. And we just definitely don't want our illustrations to look like they're created by a computer program. We don't want them to look like they're exactly what we can do with unlimited tools. Now realize, if I want this Nighthawk to be a dark bird, I can also color behind it. You can see the gray behind the ink is pretty dark already. So once I've established kind of my main value range, which I think I have, my lights to darks to grays, then I'm more confident with how to approach the rest of it. And my strokes can start to get a little bit wider. As long as the program keeps up with me, I might even start kind of scribbling a little bit. 